love that feeling when you just get home from work and there's car parts. Look. Alrighty. We have some flanges for the fuel tank. Oh, look at that. So, a gentleman in Perth makes these up um, and posts them out to you if you need them. Um, this is perfect top and bottom plate with these awesome little bolts um, for the conversion of the VE fuel pump to go into the RE28 fuel tank. These look really nice. Damn, they're nice. The bolts are really cool. The flange looks, it's heavy too, it's really good weight, um, which I like. You know when you buy something and it's, <coughs> oh, I can't talk. Oh. You know when you buy something and it's um, really light to, to the feel and you just feel it's like, just crap. Well, this is not that. This feels heavy. It feels strong. The threads feel really good. They're not binding up. Um, oh boy! Just takes a bit to unscrew them, but we'll get there. Awesome. So they've got two different thicknesses. Um, the thicker one will be the base bit that will go that'll weld onto the fuel tank. Um, and the thinner one is just the clamp piece that'll actually clamp it down on top. Um, probably clamping the o-ring into it as well. I'm not 100% sure how they fit, but I'll figure that out. I'll just go get the pump. So here's the fuel pump itself and an o-ring. So this will be actually welded to the fuel tank. So I'm imagining this is going to slide down into, into it. Because you have to take this in and out. Um, I'm kind of, a, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but you know, I'm just piecing it together. I've not done this before. It looks so good. So yeah. I just asked the guy that I bought them off just to double check on the o-ring um, how he's done his in the past just to make sure I get it sealed correctly I will figure it out someone will tell me anyway um, but yeah I'm really happy with the way they're built they're heavy they're strong they look good the threads wonderful I like them a lot I think it looks really neat too but um yeah on the Celica forums his name is Zed Z Z Z E D D or Z E D D um, if you do want to do this conversion for EFI, I think it's awesome because the VE fuel pump has a surge tank built into it. So when you're going around corners, the fuel doesn't uh, run out. Basically, you're always going to have a bit of fuel left in this tank um, for when you run into corners. The fuel doesn't fly across the fuel tank. You'll always have feed. You'll always have feed to the pump. I do need to get a fuel filter to go onto the end of this so I don't suck up all the junk in my tank once it's cleaned up. Um, I just have to double check that the arm, the arm might need to be bent a little bit just to fit my tank. Apart from that, it looks awesome. I do need to sort out my plug though. I do have a diagram. And the guy Zed on Facebook has written up a big report on how to fit this in. I kind of probably just need to look at it again and that'll probably answer my o-ring question but he's got a diagram on the plugs and how they work and which wires go where 
um, so that's not going to be too hard to fit. So I just cut the uh, original sender hole out of the fuel tank. I used the top piece of the VE fuel pump flange to mark it out. This went around with a grinder, a bit messy, but we can tidy it up. Um, that comes out of there. This is the inside. Looks a bit shitty. Ah, that's just vinegar in there, so it's not going to blow up on me. So yeah, got to clean this fuel tank out now and clean up the edge and flatten the edges of this tank so it will mate with the bottom piece of the flange which is not too much work. It's just going to be this area here and this area that needs to be lifted. Um, and I can panel beat that out. Got to weld up a little hole. Work out what I'm doing with the baffles and um, these other little bits here, if I need them or not. We don't know, but yeah, let's get to it. Well, it's time to get some progress done on the fuel tank. I made some phone calls yesterday um, at a red something radiator place. I don't really want to say who, but I think everyone's going to know anyway. Uh, they quoted me $470 to clean the inside of the fuel tank um, and give it a coating of, I don't know, like $20 paint. Um, I told him I don't need all that extra stuff done, I just want the inside of the fuel tank cleaned out of my rust and junk and he said oh it's still going to cost like 300 and something dollars, I thought it's too expensive so I made a few more calls and there was a place in Burley which I'm on my way to now, I have the fuel tank in the boot, um, they're a radiator shop down there and I told him my tank's in the worst condition you've ever seen, it's horrible, it's rusty, it's junky, it, it's crusty, it's so bad and he said yeah no problem, $87. That's a huge price difference. I was expecting maybe 210, 250 maybe, but um, we'll see what $87 gets me. I, I think it's gonna get me past the stage of having all the crud inside the fuel tank at least. Uh, so I'm gonna take it down there and see what they say. And I'm also, I've also got my heater core, the heater core that was all corroded and misformed and crappy. Um, and I'm taking the air conditioning unit as well just because the ends have been cut off and blocked up I'm gonna see if they've got new ends um, and also talk to them about getting that air conditioning running again and possibly finding a con uh, condenser for, for the engine um, but yeah that's what I'm gonna to do today it's a beautiful day I'm gonna go down to Burley in Queensland because I live on the Gold Coast so I might even stop off and get ice cream or something good weather for that anyway I'm stoked I just saved a lot of money we'll see how it ends up so yeah, I'm stoked, that's awesome. Um, Radtech, they've come in $120. I asked them to do a little bit extra to the fuel tank. So instead of just the clean and the wash and all that kind of stuff, um, there's a little tiny hole on one of the side, on the side of the fuel tank. And I said, look, how much would you charge me just for the full clean and de-rustify and junk removal? Um, and also weld up um, that little hole on the side of the fuel tank. He said, 120 bucks, he'll do it all. That is, like compared to the $470 quote I got um, at the other place, this guy's legit. He, I mean, he's still making money out of it. It's not like, it's not like he's doing it for free. Um, $470 at the other place was just a complete rip. And I, I knew that when I heard it, I thought it's ridiculous. Like they just maybe don't want to do the job. I don't understand. But anyway, Radtech in Burley. Um, awesome little shop um, he's got a few tanks a few tanks sitting on the ground that he's in, in the process of doing now uh, but yeah he also gave me a radiator um, 
a radiator to test fit on the car because I told him I don't have one that works. He said it's been laying around the shop for so long. Um, if it works, if it fits, um, he said I could have it, but I'll swing him some money. I don't feel like taking something from business for free. It feels a bit weird, and especially if it works fine. Um, he also said he might have to reposition the bottom outlet hole just so it matches up with the straight pipe to the bottom of the uh, water pump on the engine. Um, so yeah, happy days. I'm going to come back next week, uh, pick it up. It might be finished today, we'll see. Um, if it is finished today, I will pick it up because I want it I want it in the car. But yeah, we'll see how we go. So back from my adventure at the uh, fuel tank place. Um, I just got back and this place is an absolute mess. Uh, before I really do anything, I'm going to clean it all up. I can't work like this. I'm normally one to have a nice clean garage, but lately I've been so bad at being lazy. So yeah, I'm going to get this, get this place sorted. I'm tripping over my spanners and absolutely everything so clean this up and then keep working I've got a few new parts today as well, seeing as I was around driving and heading to shops and stuff. Uh, first little bits are the mush head screws. These are flat headed screws with a nice wide um, thread on them, which is perfect for putting these trim pieces up here. Now I have used a few of the um, button head screws that I got from Bunnings Warehouse and they are working but they're not quite, the, the body of the screw is not quite thick enough to really grab the whole of the metal. Um, so some of them actually keep turning on themselves um, where the proper mush head screws get a good grip and we'll hold these in place. These, this is not their final position yet, I still have to put sealant up underneath and then reattach. Um, I also need to wait for the rubbers to get here for the trims before I really go and put them on, but I thought I'd buy them just so I got them. I also went and bought the body um, bolts. I've got a couple. Um, I want to put new ones of these on nearly every part that I touch, so i got to get more for the bonnet latch that's the original one um, it, it's going to get replaced so for all these pieces I'll be using the new screws and they're pretty cheap uh, 20 of them was four dollars and the guy at the shop I said look I need a couple the guy at the shop said well we do a hundred pack for 12 bucks so I thought well that's cheap so I got some nice short ones these are 12 mil these are perfect for um, you know, typical body bolts and nuts and stuff and holding your panels on because they don't extrude deep down um, into your panel. I've also got some of the longer ones just for the sake of it. Um, 100 washers which is important and also got 100 of the nuts just because you never have enough. Um, I also got, so there's my three packs of those screws for the window trims. I got some retaining springs here. Um, one of these will hold my clutch mass, my clutch slave cylinder arm. It'll put tension on it so it stays firm against the clutch pin. Um, I don't need the fork or the arm moving on me and having the pin fall out of its position. Uh, the other one needs to be installed from this point here on the latch to that little grabby piece there and that's going to keep pressure on the um, the bonnet so when it when it closes or sorry when you actually unhitch the bonnet it will push up the little piece of metal 
and actually de-latch the bonnet from the body and that spring goes from there to there and just keeps pressure on it. Um, so that's pretty much perfect. So that'll go on as well. Um, we were talking about the heater core. I'm going to take that guy's advice. He said it's about $350 to $400 to get one of these, to get it fixed or to get it recorded or get to get one made up. For now, I'm just going to delete it. I'm not going to put it back in the box, the two pipes that come from the engine. Um, I'm just going to get a joiner and fit them back together on themselves. Um, so it basically just bypasses the heater completely. Um, but the air conditioning, I'll sort that out as well. Uh, the fuel pump is pretty much just waiting for me to finish welding the plates on. And I got a box in the mail. I'm going to open it up, see what it is. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Ah, excellent. So these are the bushings and rollers and slidey nylon pieces that are going to go onto my windows. Um, it took me about a year to two years to find windows for this car. I finally did and all these little pieces are in need of replacing. The rollers will go inside the door. These little grommet pieces clip onto the side of the window to slide inside the channels. Um, right now they just wobble everywhere so I've uninstalled them. So I reckon that might be done today. Can't promise it. We'll see how much time I got. Things look so much better when they got new bolts on them, so I do recommend doing this to your car. It's like cost of, like I spent $60 on all of those little pieces up on the bench there. So to be able to put some nice new bolts throughout the whole car and body screws, uh, totally worthwhile doing. You don't end up with these, you know, crappy rusted out old screws. I think it looks a heck of a lot better. Um, I'm going to replace some of these because these are far too long. These are far too long, and I just think it looks ridiculous, so I'm going to put the shorter ones on. Um, I've got them throughout the body, um, so 100 should do me. If I need more, I'll just go get them. Uh, looks so much better. Well, I think it's time to clean up the door handles. They're going to go black. Um, this one's in good condition, the other one is covered in blue paint and all scratched up, so to match the uh, the trim now of the window surrounds. It's time to clean these up, get some paint on them.
my lights just arrived. So excited. I've been um, waiting for these for a week. They finally rocked up. Brand new lights. They're going to make the front of the car look sick. New rubber pieces, all the wires are on. That's so good. Um, so yeah, four headlights was $66.80. Um, now that's including postage <laughs> from Penrith to Gold Coast. So these guys are going to live in here, obviously. And they're going to look good doing it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I also decided to go get myself a central locking kit because who doesn't want central locking? Seriously. If you don't want central locking then I don't know. So yeah, this is going to get installed in the car at some point. Whew. Man, there's an array of wires and mounting brackets under there. Um, I got a four-door kit because that's the only one they had. It was still only 50 bucks, so it was nice and cheap uh, from Super Cheap. Uh, I only need two of them because, well, it's a two-door. I wonder if I can make one work on the boot. No, that'd be stupid, wouldn't it? It would open when I open the friggin' door. Anyway, two remotes. Get them installed at some at a later date work out a way to actually get them mounted in the car as well which won't be too hard i'll just use some self-tapping screws but yeah good fun now while i was at bunnings i also bought a bunch of adhesive closed cell pieces um because i'm going to use them on the window trim bits um so this is a double-sided thin foam that's going to go onto that there and that there which is basically the original spots that they were in and then that one there is going to go get stuck up into place under there and then screwed in um main reason i bought these thicker ones is for this quarter window um the inside rubber is you know easy you buy that off ebay or wherever but around the outside it needs to also seal and those pieces you can't really buy for these cars so i'm going to give the double-sided sorry single-sided closed cell foam a go and i'm going to adhese it to the outside of this and then when it squishes into the actual frame of the window it should give me a nice tight waterproof seal or at least very water resistant. Um, I'm going to put some on this, and I'm also going to be putting some around um, the actual curvature of the window just to make sure it's all in place. And the adhesive felt, I'm going to give it a go and make up my own um, little pieces here that rub up against the window frame, one on the inside door panel, and then one that'll get stuck onto that piece there just because they're like 250 dollars to buy off ebay and you know i've already got the actual metal frame pieces i just don't have the well the felt on them is pretty crap Ugh. so if i can get these to work um i'll clean them up i've got most of the pins that join onto the car still um and i'll just rip this crappy old one out of here um, see how we go with it. Maybe I'll be able to use one of these on one side, but the felt one needs to be on the um, on the outside somewhere. We'll see. I reckon these are going to work really well. Um, they're nice thin strips. Um, I'm going to put them on the actual unit now, but I'm not going to remove the second peel yet. Um, so I, I'm actually going to mount them just so they live in the window trims uh, for now and then when I'm actually ready to completely hard install them I'll peel this off and then re-stick them in place but they're going to come up all like this and they'll live there like that but they're perfectly edged like they're supposed to be a seal there and a seal there so I'm going to do two here on every piece with all of my sticky bits get them sitting on the car 
wait for the rubbers to arrive for the quarter panels, for the quarter windows, and then do a full hard install and that will be where they live forever. So until then, this is uh, gonna get put on hold. Well, I'll tell you, it's been a big day. I've done a lot of little things, um, and I think it's I think it's me done. I've put all the little tiny double-sided cushioning sticky bits on the black trim pieces now, um, so they they can sit there until I get the rubbers. I got to put that back in the car. We'll do that next weekend. Um, yeah, store handles and stuff. So this is just, you know, a quick little... So basically now everything's black. So we've got um, black door handle and my Solex lock. So um, this is awesome. I like that. I think it looks a lot, a lot more modern with the, the black Solex ring around it and the words. I think it just looks pretty cool. You know, they may not be the most super safest lock in the world, but it's an RA28. The original lock used to be able to get into it with a butter knife, so at least this is a slight upgrade. It will have a full alarm system on it. I'm going to have a um, steering lock on it no matter what. Yeah, if people want to steal these cars, they're going to steal these cars. I'll just drag it onto a tow, uh, tow truck. But they look cool. They look smart. Um, it's all hooked up. It's all linked up. It was very, very easy to install uh, that piece, uh, the, the both locks on both sides, which is excellent. Um, on the on the windows here, I used those little clips, which I think I spoke about earlier, to hold the the rods in place. So when you actually open the door, um, things stay where they need to stay. Uh, the dash will go back in at some point. I'm thinking about changing the color of the dash as well. So instead of all black everywhere, having this a beautiful silver color. I really like the look of it. I saw it at an image and I think it looks a lot smarter than just pure black. We'll see. You know me, I say something and then I do opposite. Um, so these are the quarter frame in. Um, got a couple of little rubber double-sided molds here just to compress a little bit against it. I will put more in when it's ready for the final fitment, but that's in really nice. Um, I'm loving it and I'm actually, the, the black is growing on me more and more and more, so I'm Loving it. I've ordered the little clips for the windows from um, Automotive Surgery in Burley, uh, Toyota Specialist. He's getting them from Japan. I need 21 of them before the front window goes in. I finally got a hood liner from Chris. You'll probably see him on Facebook. He's got a few parts kicking around. Um, he doesn't advertise any parts, but you know he's got a lot there. And you know if you're friendly and you say nice things, he uh, he might let you come have a look at some parts. Um, he's on Facey. Um, I'm lost. I've done so many little things today, I can't keep up. Um, the radiator is relatively in position. It will fit. This is what I'm going to use 100%. Um, I do need the return line from the other side. Um, welded here, which the guy at the fuel tank shop will do for me because he's a legend. Um, I need a hose to run from here to that pipe. I'll delete this little tiny panel here because it's just kind of in the way. I'll get him to cut that off for me as well. Um, I got to actually fix that and spray it black because it's purple, show color purple, which was the color of this car at some point in its life when it was a uh, awesome marble purple and blue show car. It looks pretty cool. Um, and then I did go and buy myself, on top of everything, I got heaps more of these gloves. Two bucks, Tool Pro from Super Cheap. Oh man, I got so many of these pairs, they're so good. I did buy myself a um, central locking kit. 
There it is. I'll put that on at some point. I'd like to put that in before I do the window rubbers and everything because I don't want to be taking the window in and out of the car. I'll do this next weekend. But yeah, just quick update. Lots of little things today. A lot of touch up jobs. I got some felt for the inner door as well. Um, you know, just a little bit of new double side sticky felt that I'll put on the black chrome trim piece. Uh, works really well. Um, oh boy, got to change all my little bolts over. But yeah, it's coming along good. Till next time. Hope there's something interesting to show you because this episode was a lot of talking and not much working. But any hooties, till next time.